What is going on? Welcome back to Jiu-Jitsu Outlet. I'm sitting here with Sierra Garcia, who just recently got a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You said back in May. So congrats yes. on that. And I know that you've got quite a story of kind of how you you uh, used Jiu-Jitsu to kind of help you bounce back from rock bottom in your life. And I want to hear all about that. So let's get into this. I want to hear just how did jujitsu help your life specifically with, uh, with addiction recovery? Um, Oh, that's a, that's a real broad question. So, um, I'll just be upfront. Like I was addicted to heroin for a long time. I'll give us a backstory. Um, when I was in the military, I was in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan and it, it did a lot of damage to my spine, my brachial plexus, things like that. So I, I have a lot of nerve damage. Um, and of course the, the way that they treat that is they just throw rocks and sets at you because it's the military and it's whatever gets you functional again. Um, so I had to do some rehab, um, some physical rehab for that. Uh, I spent years abusing pills and then, uh, once I got out of the military, um, my prescriptions ran out and I couldn't get them anymore. Uh, and heroin was unfortunately easier to get than opioids. So I spent uh, many, many years doing that. Um, I did eventually get clean and I've, I've been clean for a little over seven years now. So like way before I started jujitsu, but, but one of the things that we say in the meetings that I go to is that like abstinence isn't recovery. Right. So like I've been off the drugs, but like the, the reasons that I got addicted in the first place and the problems that I was having in my life and the, the troubles that I was facing, those never went away. Right. And like heroin was always there to like, I didn't feel anything physically, but I also didn't feel anything emotionally. And that was, that was kind of what I wanted. That's how I wanted to feel back then. You know, because I, I didn't want to process the childhood traumas that I've got. I didn't want to process the PTSD that's, that's happened in my life. I didn't want to deal with the relationship issues. So like, if I could just not feel anything, that's great. And that's, that's one of the things that I, you know, I want to talk about later in my book is that, you know, the, the whole reason that I got on the drugs is so that I wouldn't have to deal with my problems. And the problem with that is like, once you clean up and sober up, the problems are still there. You know, it doesn't matter if it's an addiction to alcohol or an addiction to heroin, cocaine, whatever, like whatever your escapism is, once you're done escaping, the problems are right back in your face. And I, I just never really developed the tools for that. And then um, in, what year is it? It's 2022. So in the spring of 2021, I actually got diagnosed with cancer. And that was, that was really hard. I was coming out of a bad relationship that was really abusive. And then I went immediately from that to cancer treatments and stuff like that. And something in me is just like, I haven't lived enough to really be happy with where I'm at if I die, you know? So I, I started getting back into martial arts and it, it started with judo. Um, I love judo. I just, it is so taxing on my body from the, the helicopter crash. So like we're, we're throwing each other around and we're doing takedowns all day. And like you do jujitsu. So like, you know, if, if somebody executes a good takedown, it, it fucking hurts. Right. Like, and, and getting up from that over and over again was too much, but like, we would also practice Nawaza and on the ground I was, I was having a blast. I was like, I'm squirmy. Like I'm, I'm kind of big. I weigh about 215 pounds, but I'm, I'm very flexible and, and quick for that. So like once we got on the ground, I was having fun. And then one of my buddies was like, you know, you can have the ground fighting without the throwing, right? Like, like you, you know, there's a sport for that. And eventually I, um, I started at Timberales in Providence and that's that's how I got into jujitsu. And like one of the things that I learned really quick and like the the part that I'm working on in my book right now is like the first 10 weeks. So I I signed up for jujitsu and then like there's a flyer on the table for tap cancer out. Right. So I'm like, I'm in remission and I just started jujitsu and there's a fundraising tournament for cancer. And I'm like, okay, sign me up. Right. Like I'm I'm all for it. People are like you just started, maybe don't compete. And like, nah, fuck that. Like, I need a goal. Like, I, I want something to work towards. And like, the the first 10 weeks of jujitsu is kind of this, this weird, 
like this weird time in my life where I learned a lot of really hard lessons really, really quickly. Um, the, the first is like, like the, the biggest lesson that I had to learn was that it just how little I actually knew, you know, and that's, that's hard for a lot of people in our country to like really, really sit with. Right. Because like our entire identity is founded off what we produce, at least in America. And like, that's, you could argue how healthy or not that is, but like to walk into something and know literally fucking nothing is, is really, it's a jagged pill for a lot of people to swallow. So like, I, I grew up doing karate. I like, like most kids, there was a gym by the house and I would cut grass to pay for it because we were really poor. So I did karate in the Marines. We had McMap and I was an instructor trainer for that. You know, I did some kickboxing while I was in the Marine Corps. Like, I've been fighting my whole life. I go into this gym, right? And I, you know, I've been an athlete my whole life. I've been a fighter my whole life. So I'm like, I've got that ego, you know, like, there's always that trial class kid that thinks he's a badass. And, and like, that was me. And it, I just got fucking destroyed over and over and over. Like, you know how it goes. And somewhere in there, I had to learn that, like, my ego's absolutely got to fucking die. Like, it's got to go. You know, and that's that's something that, like, it was really hard for me to learn. Like, I I was a Marine. Like, pr- pride is everything for me. And, like, my ego had to die. And I, I had to learn that until I could accept that I didn't know anything at all and just be comfortable with that, that I wasn't going to learn anything. And it was that that really kind of that really kind of translated to my recovery process because like like I said earlier, the reasons for my addictions weren't going away. Like my relationship troubles weren't going away, my health problems weren't going away, the pain that I the physical and emotional pain that I feel, none of that's going away. Like just in day to day life, we're going to have problems and they're always going to be there, whether it's money, whether we're, you know, we're they're late. The the line at the supermarket is is long. Like there's always going to be something that's frustrating and annoying for us. And I hadn't really developed the tools to deal with that. But I always thought, well, I'm clean and, you know, I've got money, so I've I've got it figured out. But like inside, I'm still dying. And. The lessons that I learned in jujitsu with like the the death of my ego, um, like the the listening with my ears and not my mouth type thing that like was a really hard lesson for me too, because you know, I was a teacher, I was an instructor trainer for a martial arts. So like it was really hard to grasp just how little I knew. And over time of getting smashed into the mat over and over and over and over and over again, finally one of my buddies, Carlos is like, you know, one of these days you're going to learn just how much you don't fucking know. And it's going to change your life. And it, it really did. It, it was very, very quick. Yeah. That's amazing that you bring that up that, uh, that you had this background in other martial arts, but it still didn't matter. And man, I've rolled with other people who've done uh make map and I was in the army for a while. I was a military police officer and um, I remember going through training and there was a guy who was a make map instructor and I barely knew any jujitsu at the time. And uh, we were pretty much neck and neck, even though he had been training in make map like for a long time, apparently. But and I basically just started jujitsu. Um, but, uh, you know, make map and uh, the, the same thing with army combatives. They have the right. different levels of army combatives. And um, a lot of times those those people think that it's going to translate over to jujitsu and it, it really doesn't because the jujitsu guys just have so much more time on the mats. So um, it's very humbling and it's amazing that you would speak to that humility and kind of how it would play into your recovery. So let me ask you this, like, what about uh, afterwards, you know, after you kind of went through that humbling experience? Um, cause you've obviously got a lot of mental toughness, you know, you, you're someone who's overcome something like cancer. You've overcome being in a bad helicopter crash in the military. You've overcome just being in the military, which a lot of people don't make it through. Um, and, uh, there's, there, it seems like you've overcome a lot in your life. So, um, and obviously you're still doing jujitsu, right? So how right. did you overcome all these things? Like, what is that 
mental discipline that you were able to to build? The uh the one thing that I that that really sticks with me that that always kind of points out is like in jujitsu it doesn't it doesn't really matter what color your belt is. There's always going to be questions, right? So like the questions that we we have to answer at white belt, those are like how do I survive? And then you get good at surviving, then your belt starts turning darker. But like the questions themselves never go away. Right. So like my my roles at Blue Belt have been a lot harder than they were at White Belt because everybody else is like, well, you understand the basics. I should just be able to go hard with you. So the the questions are always going to be there. What I what I realized in jujitsu is that through time and through struggle, we can find the answers. Right. The answers, uh, Miyamoto Masashi, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with him, but the the famous samurai guy and I love him. There's a there's a story that I want to tell later, but like he um at one point he said you have to understand there's more than one way to climb the mountain. Right. So like regardless of what position I'm put in, there's always an answer. I just can't be married to the problem. Right. So like if you get stuck in side control and you're you're fighting a super or an ultra heavyweight, like that is that is the worst shit in the world. Uh, at Tim's place in Providence, there's a guy named Paul, and I don't know how much Paul weighs, but he's a big fucking dude, and he's a black belt, and we kind of all joke around when he goes to Neon Belly, and we call it Neon Soul. Like, it just hurts, and it sucks, and it's, like, in jiu-jitsu, people are there training to kill you, and it's it's painful, and it's a demoralizing process, but if you keep trying, if you keep showing up, you will always be able to find an answer. There's always a fucking solution. You just can't pout about the problem. You have to find the toughness to work for the solution. Like a lot of times we call it gameness. I don't know if that's a term you've ever heard. Like always looking for a way to win, even when you're losing. You know, so that's that lesson really stuck with me. And when I started applying that to my problems outside of the mats, I started learning that like a lot of these things that used to drive me to drugs, I could just deal with. I just had to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think that's a, that's a big lesson that I I think a lot of people really need to learn is that a little bit of discomfort is just going to make you better. You just have to learn how to work through it. That's so true. Like when you, uh, when you apply yourself and you get out of this bad position and then you turn it around and you're able to escape from a bad position and get into a good position, then actually win the match or win the round or whatever it is. It's like jujitsu teaches you how to be resilient and how to bounce back from, from these sorts of failures and turn it around. And I think that that's a super powerful benefit. So uh, let me ask you this. What has jujitsu done for your mental health? Like, let's talk about who were you before you started training and compare that to who are you today? Oh, I was stressed the fuck out before I started training. I was, I was constantly stressed. It was work stress, relationship stress. I just, I didn't have an outlet, you know, and that's, that's important. Like I also paint, I write, I, I do a lot of things, but I didn't have a physical outlet to like deal with my frustration and you know in a in a different vein I didn't have an outlet to like focus all of that energy into and that's like that's one of the things that I enjoy about jujitsu is like when I'm there none nothing else matters you know job stuff doesn't matter my girlfriend like she knows I'll get back to the text message eventually but I'm fighting people like I'm tuned in and you you know, you, you kind of have to be, or you'll just get murdered on the mats. It doesn't matter how good you are, but like having that outlet has helped me process a lot of stress. You know, we, it's kind of a cliche in jujitsu. We talk about like the flow state where it's like, I'm here and I want to be here. And there's like 50 different ways to get here. So let me try all of them and see what works. And you just kind of go with it. Um, the Bruce Lee talks about being like water. And my, my old instructor really talked about that and having that on the mats translated off the mats where it's like, as things just pop up, right. I don't have to brute force through the problem. 
I can just work around it to see what helps. I don't have to like get sucked into that stress ball. You know, like I, like I said earlier, if, if money problems is like being inside control, like, yeah, it sucks, but it's temporary and there's a way around it, you know? So it's, it's definitely helped reduce my stress a lot. That's huge because stress leads to so many other things. Like for me, stress was a big reason why I used to smoke cigarettes and uh, jujitsu helped me to have an outlet for that. And now I don't even want it anymore just because it's not, I don't have that same level of stress. And um, that's so powerful. I'm really glad that, that it's helped you so much. And I know that um, I know a lot of people who have struggled with addiction, they find jujitsu because jujitsu is addicting. Like that's a big part it is, of it. It really is. Um, I don't know if you got to listen to the episode that I did with uh, Musin Corbury. I think it's episode 19, uh, but we went over the science behind jujitsu and uh, he talked about the the different uh, chemicals in your brain that are stimulated through jujitsu, like dopamine and norepinephrine and uh, acetylcholine and, uh, and serotonin. Those are, those are the four that we talked about. And, um, it's the same sorts of things that get activated by, uh, by drugs, by, uh, different chemicals that you would take in, you know, different chemicals for, uh, even a SSRI, like something that you might be given for, uh, for a depression or anxiety. It can get treated right. by not really treated, but the same chemicals get stimulated through jujitsu. And another one that's really big is uh, oxytocin that gets stimulated through touch. And uh, it gets stimulated anytime that you you have a physical contact with someone that lasts over 30 seconds, your body starts to make oxytocin. And um, all of this helps you to have like a action, it, it balances your hormones, basically. So um, that all it has so many benefits to it. Like, um, that's something that I'm really passionate about, like about learning about is, um, you know, just kind of the actual science behind this stuff. And right. So yeah, I've, um, uh, it's really like interesting. I, <laughs> I was, I was telling Carla, like Carla's my girlfriend and I was telling her, like, there have been times where I just really didn't want to go to class. It's, it's been a little harder since I moved. Um, we're, we're still figuring schedules out and I'm recovering from an injury and things like that. But like used to the gym that I trained at was on my way home from work. So like, there was no excuse not to go. I literally had to pass it to get to my house. And there's always times where like any other sport or hobby, like you don't feel good. You got a headache. You don't want to go. It's, it's an hour of your life. Like you just want to go home and sit on the couch. You've had a bad day. Your boss is being a prick, like whatever, like, and then I go anyway, you know, like Joko Willinks talks about like discipline. Once the motivation runs out, just doing it anyway. But like, I have never regretted going to class, but I have definitely regretted not going to class because like you're getting murder hugs, but you're still getting hugs, you know? And it doesn't matter if you win like in a role or something, but like all the little tiny victories that you get during a role, whether it's a sweep or a counter or like you finally hit that guard pass that you've been drilling for like six months and it finally clicks like those little victories, they all feel so good, you know? So it's like, it doesn't matter how crappy my day was outside of that. As long as I show up and I put in some work, I know I'm going to feel better at the end of it. Even if I got trashed, you know, like that's the good part. Like you go in, you have a trading session and some days you're just the nail every round, like the, the trial class guy to the, the three strike black belts, just murdering you. And at the end of it, everybody's smiling and happy. And I'm just like, I love that. And it's, it's kind of like the cultural thing too. Cause it, it's a, it's a sense of reward just to put in the work, you know, and that's, we have a, I'm now training at Atlas Jiu Jitsu in, uh, in Albany. And there's a guy we were doing a um, kind of like King of the guard. We were working on guard passes or like sweep or submit from guard for the guy on the bottom. And it's just situational sparring, but this guy, he's only been in like maybe seven classes that he literally started two weeks ago. And, you know, I was talking to him after the class and I was like, so how's it feel? And he's like, I'm getting beat up every single time I'm here. And I love it. And I'm like, yeah, that's, I love it. Cause it's like, it's free therapy. It it really is free therapy. It just, it washes away all the other stress. And part of it for me is like, if I can survive the things that are happening to me on the mat, 
you know, I've got, I've got big dudes trying to choke me out and break my arms and like, they're training to kill me and they're going at it just as hard as I am. You know, if I can get through that and be just fine, I can get through just about anything and just be, be just fine. Yeah. And, um, it, it changed. What I found is it, um, it enhances as you get more technical, like the longer that you do it, you begin to get more technical and then you become better with your techniques. And, uh, like it, it just gets more, uh, applicable, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like right. right now, for example, I'm trying to figure out uh, how to get better at video editing. Cause I'm trying to grow the jujitsu outlet YouTube channel. And, uh, and it's going really well, but it's kind of complicated, but honestly, it's nowhere near as complicated as all of the jujitsu stuff that I've been learning for the last 12 years. So I kind of have this attitude these days of like, no matter what I'm trying to figure out, like a few weeks ago, I had to learn how to build a foundation for a, a tiny house that we're, we just got at our property. Right. And um, it was easy, honestly, like it was, it was probably pretty difficult for someone who had never like done anything difficult in their life, but I I do difficult things every day. And that's almost like a mantra that I've developed through jujitsu is that I do difficult things every day, like something that's difficult. Like that's something like for you and for anyone who's doing jujitsu, who's listening. It's like people like us, we do difficult things every single week that most people, uh, most people would never, they're too scared to even attempt. Like, like for, I for, <laughs> I think yeah. people need to do hard things. Uh, one of your yeah. one of your uh, episodes the other day was talking about uh, he brought up the famous kung fu quote, like if you want to master kung fu, the training must be severe. And like another way to that I've that I've thought about that. There's one competitor, Flo Grappling, did a, a video on it, and I can't think of what his name is, but his mantra has always just been do difficult shit easily. And I, I think about that every time something comes up and like even my girlfriends kind of started using it of like things are going to happen. Things are going to be difficult. Do them anyway. You know, we we need to do hard things because it teaches us one who we are, you know, just in general. If you're if you're never really challenged, how do you know what you're made out of? But. Also, doing difficult things teaches us that we can do difficult things, and it builds resiliency, and it builds strength, and it it's um, our motto at the gym. I think it's on the back of my hoodie. It says, through struggle comes greatness, and like you, you have to have some kind of adversity in your life that's just constantly challenging you, and it over time, it teaches you that, that all these other things that you think are difficult – you just have to apply yourself and it becomes easy. You know, like another another Musashi quote that I love is like, it may seem difficult at first, but everything is difficult at first. It's like the more you apply yourself to anything, the easier it becomes. You know, and I that is a big lesson that I learned through jujitsu as well. It's like, again, I'm getting killed day in, day out. So all these other little things like the the woman griping at me at the grocery store because the line is too long. Like yesterday I got harassed because I was using a voucher from the union to pay for my groceries. And this lady's just, well, this is why it takes all. And I'm like, okay, lady, if this is the worst part of your day, you have a very privileged life. You know, so I, I love it. I love the fact that because we're so challenged, it puts everything else in perspective and just makes it easier to deal with. Yeah. I think you said it, you said it so beautifully. And, uh, I want to get into talking about writing and I know that you're working on a book. I am. Also, yep. I know you've brought up uh, Musashi a few times during this book and, uh, or during this, this, uh, this episode, and you might not know this, but we just recorded. And by, if you're listening to this, it's probably already released, but I just recorded a whole episode all about the book of five rings where me and my yeah. buddy, Brian, we dove deep into it. And, uh, I love that book. So, uh, we've talked about it a lot on this podcast before, but, before we get into talking about your book, can we talk about Musashi just a little bit? And like, what have you Absolutely. taken away from studying Musashi and his writings? So um, Musashi was a, was a samurai. He was a ronin. Um, he, uh, he also wrote, um, I can't remember the name of it in Japanese, but it's the, the Way of Walking Alone or The Way of the Ronin. And uh, he also wrote the Book of Five Rings and dedicated it to his students. Um so some of the history of Musashi, part of the reason I like him so much is he's kind of like 
if you just take his books, you think he's like this mythical samurai Sun Tzu type warrior. And really, he's just like an everyman. Like there's a there's a story of one of his duels. He actually wakes up late to a scheduled duel, has to catch a boat to go to this island. He's on the boat, realizes I left my swords back home and starts carving them out of wood and then kills the guy with them. Like, so it's like, he's the MacGyver of Samurai, but a lot of his, that's my girlfriend blowing my phone up all of a sudden, but um, he, uh, he just kind of like made stuff work, but he also believed in training constantly, intentionally facing difficulties, and a lot of it is like, I lost my train of thought all of a sudden, but one of the things that I like that, that he says is like, if when you understand the the way broadly, you'll see it in everything. And he, he's specifically talking about strategy or sword fighting in, in his books, as you know, but like his application of sword fighting really has nothing to do with sword fighting and is just a way of looking at life. Right. And his big thing, one of the things that he says is like the way of the warrior is the resolute acceptance of death. Right. So he's he's very aware both in that and the way of walking alone that like he is going to die. Like everybody is going to die. It's a matter of how you approach that. And like. You only get one life, so make it worthwhile, like devote yourself to something but he's also big on not getting hung up on all the little things, right? Like in um, the way of walking alone, he talks about, you know, eat because you need to eat, but don't chase flavors. You know, like don't, he's, he's very Buddhist as am I. So it's like, don't, don't chase all these sensual pleasures just for the sake of having them. So he's, he lives a very like stripped down life and that allows him to focus his passions on what he likes and what he's good at. I I think I think in like the the Earth book he was talking about how he got into sword fighting and it was at a really young age. Let's say it was before he was a teenager. He witnessed his first duel and he was like, "This is what I want to do. I want to learn how to fight." And he um, you know, he was he was really big on learning how to fight with both swords and things like that. But it was the constant message throughout his books was like to challenge yourself because the reward for challenging yourself is greater than any of the struggles that you're actually going to face. That really sums up a lot of what we've been talking about on this, this interview of like just the, the power that there is in overcoming difficulty and doing hard stuff just for the sake of it. And um, I think that's super powerful. So Zoom is going to kick us off here pretty soon, and we do have to start wrapping this up. Yeah, but, I see it. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your book and just tell us about what are you going to be writing about? And uh, yeah, just give us a little preview of what you're working on. All right. So um, November is National Novel Writers Month. So both my girlfriend and I are working on something. Uh, my own is called Finding the Way. And it's a story about my first year in jujitsu and like the learning to be humble learning to let my ego go, learning to accept that like there are things that I don't know and that's okay. Um, learning to overcome difficult challenges, but it's also the way for me is about overcoming heroin and the, the lifelong problems that come from addiction. So it's, it's about using the lessons learned through jujitsu. Cause like you, I'm not going to write a technical book on jujitsu. One, I'm I'm still a blue belt. And two, like you could write an entire doctor's thesis on just how to do a scissor sweep. But like the lessons applied in jujitsu, I'm talking about how I'm applying those to life outside of the mats and how it's improving my day-to-day -day life and how it's helping me like find happiness and just find satisfaction in my day-to-day -day in the absence of the chemicals that I used to be addicted to. That's amazing. I, uh, I'm excited to hear more about it. And like I told you earlier, uh, once you finish the book, we'll have you back on the show and you can tell us uh, more about it. We can, awesome. we can promote it and, and, uh, tell people where they can sign up or get the book, which I imagine will be Amazon, but yep, um, I'm currently looking at Amazon. It's a good spot to get books at from what I've, from what I've heard, but, uh, um, yeah. 
Sierra, thanks so much for coming on the show. And uh, yeah, just uh, tell us anything else. Like, is there anything else you want to close on or anything uh, you want to say? No, I mean, I've I've kind of run my mouth for about 30 minutes, but like if if anybody's out there that's thinking about starting jujitsu or judo, sambo, just like any type of combat sport, I would strongly invite them to do so. Like I know that like walking through the door the first time is terrifying, but the journey is so rewarding. Yeah. Right? Like like don't focus on the destination or even where you are in the journey. Just enjoy the process and and trust the process. Mm-hmm. That's so true. I'd recommend the same. Like, just just try it. If you haven't tried it yet, just get into it and uh, you'll really enjoy it. There's so many benefits that uh, they go along with with training. But uh, Sierra, thanks so much for coming on the show and uh, have a good week. We'll have you, you on Thank again you. sometime soon. Awesome. Thank you.